My name is Grace, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my Victorian corset that is going to be worn under the 1860s ball gown I will be making. Before we get into the construction of the corset, let's talk a little bit about the history of corsetry. Corsets as we think of them today didn't actually come into use until like the 19th century. So if someone starts talking about 18th or 17th or even 16th century corsets, they probably don't know a whole lot about historical fashion. Until the mid-16th century, structured underdresses called kirtles were the main form of shapewear. The first reference we see to a separate shaping undergarment is in the 1550s and was called a pair of bodies. 16th century pairs of bodies could be stiffened with buckram, bent grass, leather, and whalebone. In the 17th century, these garments started to be called stays. By the mid-17th century, all classes of women were expected to wear stays. In the 18th century, stays started taking on a more triangular, conical shape. Basically, everyone wanted to look like a Dorito. All classes of women still wore stays. Even pregnant women wore maternity stays. Working class women had stays that laced up the front so they wouldn't need help getting into them. However, upper class women had servants who could help them lace stays up the back. Ironically, stays were considered a man's work to make because the materials used to make them were so tough and hard to stitch through, so it took a considerable amount of force. By the beginning of the 19th century, stays were less heavily boned. The purpose of 19th century stays was more about keeping the bust supported and creating a smooth line for dresses and petticoats to fall over, as opposed to shaping like we see in previous centuries. We think of corsets and stays as something strictly feminine, but men actually wore corsets and stays near the end of the 18th and early 19th century to achieve that perfect silhouette. However, it became frowned upon after the 1830s. In women's fashion of the 1830s, the empire waistlines of the Regency era were dropping down to the natural waistline, which created a higher demand for an hourglass figure. The 19th century hourglass corset had a busk that opened at center front, which allowed all classes of women to dress more independently. We stand an independent queen. It was around the 1840s and the 1850s with the popularization of the hourglass corset that tight lacing became common. This is where a lot of corset myths come from. Yes, I said myths. People tend to hold the belief that Victorian corsets are like death traps forced upon women by the patriarchy, but this really isn't true. Corsets weren't all that bad. Like I see articles all the time about how all women tight laced and how Victorian corsets are terrible. Even my history teacher seems to think so. When I told him I was making a Victorian corset, he was like, Aren't those things like torture devices or something? Usually the people writing articles about how terrible and oppressive corsets are are trying to draw you into their articles with the shock value of a teeny tiny waist that was so teeny tiny that even people during that century probably thought it was crazy. However, if you look at information about how corsets aren't that bad, you'll find that they're written by people like historians and fashion experts. All classes of women wore corsets. People worked in corsets, people swam in corsets, people played tennis in corsets. It was just a fact of life, so it wasn't considered something extremely shocking or terrible or oppressive. Also, as someone who's worn a corset, they're pretty comfortable. I wore the one I made to my school dance under an 1880s bustle dress, and I actually had a great time, and the corset wasn't very restrictive. Unlike modern corsets, Victorian corsets were made with comfort and durability in mind. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's start making the corset. I started by making a mock-up of the corset out of cotton muslin. This was actually the second mock-up I made, but the first one, which I put on my Instagram story, I didn't know how to properly insert the busk, my needle broke, and it was an interesting time. <laughs> I made a mock-up which ended up being kind of pointless because it fits really well. But I guess I know that now, so that's good. Yeah. And there's no lacing in the back. I pinned it to my shirt and I'm holding it shut. I don't have boning in it, so it's really floppy. I have all the corset pieces cut out, so I'm going to flatline them together using a basting stitch. Flatlining is a technique commonly used in historical garments. Because instead of um, making two separate layers and then sewing them together at the end like you do in modern lining, you have the two layers and you sew them together and treat it as one piece. I 
I have the back panels right sides together and then what I need to do is sew along here so that when I turn it right side out it'll create a smooth edge for the back of the corset. I have two of the front pieces wrong sides together and I've marked out where the busk is going to be. So I just sew along these lines and then skip over where there's no line and then slide the busk through after I turn it right side out. There I am inserting part of the busk into the corset with a bunch of stains on my Peppa Pig Gucci shirt. Which, by the way, is not real Gucci. Next I need to pin and sew around the busk to put it in place. And I'm going to use a zipper foot for that so I can get as close to it as I can without hitting it with the needle. If you pay attention to me instead of the sewing, you can see all the strange faces I make when I concentrate. It's very interesting. And there's that side of the busk sewn in. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure my finger was covering and uncovering the microphone for this next part, so have fun with the inconsistency in audio. I sewed along the seam allowance for the other side of the front piece, and I just insert the busk in here, the other half. And then I need to mark out where the holes go, and so it lines up with this. Now that I marked out the holes, I need to poke through them so I can fit this part in. Um, I should use an awl, but I don't have one, so I'm going to use a pencil, which is probably unwise, but that's what's happening. I did kind of a terrible job. There are like pencil marks everywhere, but it's not like it'll be seen because the corset's worn under all the stuff, so... It's fine. Then I sewed around that side of the busk using the zipper foot. Once the busk was sewn in, I pinned together and sewed the pieces of the corset. a sort of wrinkly corset looking thing so what I need to do is take out the brown stitches that I used to base the two panels together and then I'll draw on some boning channels I started on here but I don't know if those are correct I'm sure you're wondering why I decided to make pencil marks on the outside of the corset and I wonder that too so from here on out things get pretty spicy so I'm almost done taking out the brown thread, and like halfway through that I tried to get the Taylor's chalk and pencil stains out of it, and I can't. I'll look up more ways to do it, but I don't know how, so that's kind of concerning. I guess it will just permanently have like Cheeto looking stains on it and pencil marks. So that's fun. But it's an undergarment so it won't show. Still kind of sucks, though. I'll figure it out, I guess. And at this moment, dear viewer, I decided to scrap the whole thing and start over completely. So I was so annoyed by all the stains that I decided to, to completely redo the corset, but now I have better fabric. And I'm kind of glad I decided to redo it, because I got silk dupioni, and it's very pretty. It's all pink and stuff. So I can't mess it up this time. Or else I'll be messing up Silk Dupioni. And that would be bad, because it's, like, expensive. And even though I got a small amount of it, it's still expensive. Already, I have all the corset pieces flatlined, and I tried to see if ironing the chalk with a piece of brown paper over it would help, because I saw somewhere that that's a way to remove waxy chalk. Chalk containing wax. That did not work, so I don't know what this Taylor's chalk is or why it's not coming out of anything, but I think my corset's just going to be orange on the inside, and that's okay. It'll just be a Cheeto corset. That's cool, right? It'll look fine from the outside. Then I repeated every step I had done on the other corset on this corset. Also, as you have probably guessed by my mention of both Cheetos and Doritos, I have an affinity for cheesy snacks. 
Just thought that should be established. So I ironed out the whole thing. You can see the inside with the seam allowances pressed down. This looks a little messy, but that's okay. Um, it took forever because I didn't have a tailor's ham, which means that the curved edges were much harder. But I'd say it looks pretty good now. After that, I inserted two-piece grommets so I could try on the corset, but I don't really have any footage of that. I now have a corset. It's a boneless corset, but it's a corset. It's very wrinkly because it has no boning and there's like no support for my, like, anything, so that's okay though. It's there. It's a thing. It's really a thing. Woohoo! I tried on the corset and marked out the waistline in pencil, um, and you can barely see it but I stitched 1 16th of an inch away from the edge of each seam line to create um, the first part of the stitching for boning channels. And that's because instead of having the bones sit directly on the seam line, which would put more strain on the seam, it's like a separate thing that's still really close to where it is, but it just doesn't like add the strain. What a great explanation. <laughs> So then I sewed the other half of the boning channels and then basted a quarter of an inch around the bottom of the corset to keep the bones from slipping out when I put them in. I cut all the bones and put them back in their channels so I know exactly where they go and the corset looks so funky. It's like a... it The bones are like curved so because they were on a circular boning roll. So it just looks like a really weird, like, tube of corset. It's interesting. I did another fitting and was very excited at this point because it actually looked like a real corset with bones now. When I was done dancing, I stitched some go grain ribbon over the seam allowances on the inside of the corset. This is what the inside of the corset looks like now that the ribbon has been sewn over the raw edges. And I did that by hand, and now it's time to put on the bias binding. Bias binding goes over the top and bottom edges, and it's this double folded t um, bias tape. And then you take one side and unfold it, and then pin it to here, fold it over, and then fold it like that, and then this will get folded over too, and it will create a nice finished edge. I attached the bias binding by machine and then folded it over and whip stitched it by hand so it wouldn't show through on the other side. Then I made some pudding and I ate the pudding. The bias binding is done and now it's time for flossing. Flossing is the embroidery that goes on the boning channels and it is used to keep the bones in place and it also just looks pretty. And I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use buttonhole floss for that but I just got embroidery thread because I didn't know what I was doing and I bought it so I'm gonna use it. Hopefully it'll turn out okay. I added the flossing and the lace and it's time to see what it looks like all finished. I still need to add twill tape along the waistline but I'm gonna try it on first to see what it looks like. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Look at the flossing and the lace and everything looks so nice. I'm very proud of myself, especially considering this is the first time I've made a corset or really any structured garment. So I think this is really good. <laughs> also, I originally didn't like the white bias tape, but I think it actually looks pretty good. Please pardon the trash in the corner of my bathroom. I put twill tape along the waistline to reinforce it, and then that was the finished corset. I have to say I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. I think I did a pretty good job. Thank you for watching, and feel free to like and subscribe.